Joining me now is Colorado Republican Ken Buck, who has said he is a no on the debt limit deal. Congressman, thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So let me just ask you about our reporting. We ha have reported that on a House Freedom Caucus call last night, you actually floated the idea of using the motion to vacate, which would basically force a vote to remove the speaker. Can you tell us what specifically did you say to your colleagues? Are you calling for a motion to vacate? No, I, I did not. What I said was that Speaker McCarthy had promised spending limits uh, at the 2022 level. Um, this deal calls for spending limits above the 2022 level. Um, and I was asking my colleagues in the House Freedom Caucus whether they were uh, considering a motion to vacate as a result of a broken promise. Uh, Scott Perry, the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, told me it's premature. Let's get through this battle and decide if we want another battle. So just to be very clear, you did raise the question, is anyone considering a motion to vacate? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, under what circumstances, Congressman, would you take further action? Well, look, I think that uh, uh, this bill is a horrible bill. We're, we're talking about $4 trillion of additional debt in, a, in the next 20 months. That's, that's just unsustainable for this country. Kevin McCarthy has the obligation now to come forward and explain how he is going to do better than this bill, how he is going to improve on the situation. We have 12 appropriations bills coming up in the next three months. Uh, we can get through those appropriations bills and recover some of this money. But he's got to make sure that he does that. And I think that, that motion to vacate, he may not be concerned about it because he has a plan on, on how to recover from this horrible negotiation he's had with President Biden. So just to be clear, between now and next week on June 5th, that date that the Treasury Secretary has identified for potential default, would you take any action toward a motion to vacate? Oh, no, I don't think there's I don't think anybody is talking about a motion to vacate before this bill, the, the debt ceiling bill has passed. I don't I don't believe that's uh, in, in the cards. Well, what what is your I, I heard what you said there, but Speaker McCarthy says he's not worried about it. You seem to be suggesting he should be. What's your message to him? Well, my message is that we have to make sure we get to those 2022 spending limits in the appropriations bills and not use the the debt ceiling negotiation as the baseline. We can do a lot better than where we are right now. I guess the question is, and we saw the, this during the votes for the speakership, if not McCarthy, then who? Who would you, if you got to that point of frustration, who would you support instead of Speaker McCarthy? Have you thought through that? Yeah, I have. I, I think during the speaker vote, uh, no one was stepping forward because they believed Kevin was going to win, number one. And number two, Kevin had earned it because he had done a lot of the campaigning to raise the money to get in the majority. And, and number three, no one wanted to put their head up and get their head chopped off. I think that dynamic changes drastically if there is another motion to vacate. And I'm not saying there will be, but if there is another motion to vacate or if there's a motion to vacate, um, I, I think that people will be bold and they will make uh, statements about how we need to reduce spending in the federal government. And I think the person that does that is likely going to be the next speaker. Do you have a name in your head? I have a lot of names in my head. Um, I, I know Can you one give us the not... top name? Who's the top sure, name the, in your head? The top name that's not going to do it is Ken Buck. Other than that, I don't know who is going to step forward and do that. And just give us a sense before I ask you about the broader deal. What was the response from your fellow Freedom Caucus members, broadly speaking? Did you get the sense that if these appropriations bills don't go in the direction that you support, that there would be a, a groundswell of support for a motion to vacate? I, I don't have a sense that I just got off a plane, just got into town, so I don't have a sense of what other people are talking about. I can tell you that I think from the Freedom Caucus, uh, the vote for the debt ceiling bill will probably be 80 against 20 in favor, uh, 80 percent, 20 percent. 80 percent? Opposed to the deal that Kevin McCarthy and Joe Biden cut. So, so do you think this bill can pass? Oh, I think it will pass with Democrat okay. votes. Okay. Democrats have four trillion reasons to vote for this bill. So you don't think that the nation is going to default? Oh, no, no. The nation's, okay. and, and, and the June 5th date is just a made up date anyway. It is not, the nation will not default. Well, the Treasury Secretary says it's a very serious date and that it, there could be an economic disaster if this deal is not reached by June 5th. You reject that analysis by the Treasury Secretary? 
The Treasury Secretary said we wouldn't have inflation that lasted more than a few months. Uh, I reject the analysis by the Treasury Secretary. Would you be willing to see the country default if to vote no on this deal? No, that's not a that's not an option. Uh, I will vote no. This bill will pass, and the country will not default. Do you think that? So you do not think that you have the numbers to kill the bill? We do not. Words. Okay. I do not believe that. No. Okay. I guess big picture here. This is a divided Congress, Congressman. You you know that. Is it realistic to think that a bill can pass with only Republican support? No, I think this bill will pass with, with bipartisan support. Um, but there, my there point will... is, didn't Speaker McCarthy need a compromise here in order to get this done? Sure, but you can't compromise the, the, the uh, status, the financial state of, of America. You can't. We, we're moving to $35 trillion of debt under this bill. Uh, it is a terrible deal. We can't compromise in that way. Well, but Congressman, just to go back very quickly, President Biden said he wasn't going to negotiate at all. Speaker McCarthy got him to the negotiating table over the budget. Some people are looking at this and saying, why not take the win? Why add more uncertainty and churn in this moment when the nation's credit rating is at stake? You, you know, for anybody to suggest that this bill is a win is pure folly. This bill is not a win. The American public understands that $35 trillion of debt is not sustainable. And so uh, to call this a win because, uh, you know, Republicans got a couple of billion here, a couple of billion there, is just nonsense. We, we can't keep tr uh, adding a trillion, two trillion dollars to our national debt every year without defaulting, a, a serious default, a default that we can't come back from. All right, Congressman Ken Buck, we are out of time, but I really appreciate your joining us this hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chuck is back tomorrow with more Meet the Press Now. NBC News Now coverage continues with...